What's up everyone, welcome back to Miami Miles. My name's Mickey. In today's video, the 997.1 911 Turbo six speed. That's right guys, I've been considering an option for a daily. You guys know I've got the 4RS, the 3RS, the GT3, the 458, none of which are true dailies. This thing offers a very, very satisfying proposition. This car particularly was built by AIM Performance. It produces upwards of 670 wheel horsepower on pump gas got upgraded turbos, intercoolers, exhaust, everything I would want to do if I was going to buy a car like this. And at that price point, this may be the single biggest performance bargain in history. So today we're going to find out how good is the 997.1? Will it serve as my daily and is it epic enough to make me pull the trigger on this example? So let's get right into it. So let's start with this car's appearance. Look at that ass. The sexiest car or the sexiest angle on this car is this section here. I love how the turbos have the wide hips. They've got the vent scoops on the side. The back looks aggressive and meaty. Now, in my opinion, the 997 generation is one of the most beautiful generations Porsche ever made. And in my opinion, it'll go down as the greatest. And that may be controversial, but this is the right blend of technology, speed, rawness, proportions. 911s have gotten so big. Now, as you work your way around the front, that's where the 911 design for me gets a little bit questionable. It just looks like a regular 911. That doesn't look like a car that's making right around 800 horsepower to the crank. And I think that's the appeal of a car that's going to be my daily driver. It's understated, but fast as So let's jump on the inside and show you what that's all about. All right. Oh, okay, here we are on the inside of the 997. Right away, it feels a generation or half generation older than my GT3 RS. This switch gear is a little bit older. The nice thing is that the previous owner put in a Pioneer uh, dash here and it's got Apple CarPlay and all the creature comforts you would want. Down here is the boost gauge that lets you go from somewhat crazy to insane. It's got three boost modes, but I'm not allowed to take it into C because we don't know what type of fueling that would require. But once you're actually situated, what a comfortable car. This is a car you could daily. These seats are absolutely amazing. No less comfortable than the 18-way adjustable seats in my GT3. This is something for sure that you could enjoy on a long road trip. And I'll show you guys as we go for the drive just how smooth the ride is. But overall, you guys know I love this generation's dash. I love how analog it is. And I love that this car feels small. You get into the 992 Turbo S, which I drove a couple of vlogs ago, and the car is just huge. Sure, it has this insane thrust, but it feels big. It doesn't feel nimble like this does. And that's why I think these things are going to be so historical and legendary in the future because they give you everything you want as a driver and they give you the usability that Porsche is so known for. So anyways, you've seen the outside of the car, you've seen the inside, you guys know I love Porsche. Let's go for a drive and deploy almost 800 horsepower and see how it makes me feel. So before we go for a drive, shout out to Zwack for letting us drive this car. It's currently listed on their website for $129,997. And honestly, for that money, I think I prefer this over the G80 uh, M3 CS or the uh, M3, the Agave green one, because this car, like I said, was built by AIM Performance. It's got Tile Alpha 28 turbochargers, uh, AWE intercoolers, AWE exhaust, AMS Y-pipe, DO88 intake tubes, 1000 cc injectors, upgraded coils, short shifter, Bilstein coilovers, and I think that's just about everything. Pretty much everything I would do to mod a car like this. So 670 wheel horsepower, on the dyno on 93 octane which is absolutely insane and we're going to start this drive on the 16 pounds of boost settings because i don't know what to expect 
with a car this fast. First thing you notice is that the car really has no turbo lag, which is crazy. And there's such a stark distinction between this and my GT3 RS. This car is actually really comfortable. All right, let's work our way into this. Shifter is glorious. Clutch is perfection. Really responsive on downshift. And as we go around this turn, we're gonna go on boost here to see what it's like. All right, second gear pull. Turbo boost! All right, so that was about 6,000 RPM. Dude, this car has got so much torque. And you know what's crazy? For a 2007, these PCCBs have great initial bite when you get on the pedal. Maybe because I've warmed them up a little bit. But holy shit! Car's so comfortable. It's so easy to drive. I would say 20 to 30 percent easier to drive than the GT3 RS. So one more pull in low boost mode, all the way to red. and that's low boost mode all right this thing would be sick to drive every single day i think i'd straight pipe it though and make it shoot some flames that's all it's missing is a little more tone to the exhaust but you do get all the turbo whooshes i'm gonna actually put the windows up here so you guys can hear this all right get a load of this the button just triggered 21 pounds of boost this is probably gonna be terrifying first gear let's see what we got because this car is so much lighter holy shit and I haven't even gotten into third gear well I got a little bit into it but not all the way <laughs> I do appreciate the fact that it's all-wheel drive because it does put the power down but honestly it's a lot faster than the car that I'm accustomed to Wow go on the highway now and really see what high boost does in third and fourth gear uh oh uh oh Get on boost and you're like, 
is f terrifying in third and fourth gear. It just doesn't stop pulling all the way to red line. Woo! I think the biggest takeaway is you don't feel sketched out pushing this car at all. All right, second gear pull onto the highway. Let's see what it's got. What a ride. Wow. That thing just makes you take a minute to recalibrate your brain because I am fried after that drive. It's so fast. That's the word that comes to mind. Fast, terrifying, but at the same time controlled, which means you could drive it like I just did over and over and over again and enjoy the shit out of it. But now that we've reached a conclusion, I think it's time to go to the scorecard, starting with appearance. For appearance, because it is a turbo, it's not a regular 911, I gave it an eight out of 10. It's still pretty to look at, but at the end of the day, it looks a little basic, especially in GT Silver. Then we've got sound. Sounds an 8.5 out of 10. Even though it's turboed, the whooshes, the wastegate sound, everything you hear when you are inside of the car, it's such a dramatic experience. and. Even though it doesn't have the most sonorous engine note, the turbos make up for it with a hell of a sound. Next we have performance, 670 wheel horsepower. Performance is a nine out of 10. This thing will scare even the craziest people. I guarantee this car is running low tens in the quarter mile, at least that's how it feels. I wish I could do a 60 to 130 to solidify that, but it's a nine out of 10 for performance. Gearbox, honestly, I think the gearbox in this car is a little bit better than the gearbox in my GT3 RS. The clutch is easier. The flywheel, for some reason, is a little more responsive at lower RPMs. The shifter goes into gear a lot easier. So I gave the gearbox a nine out of 10. Next is rawness. Now, even though it's a turbo, stepping back in time from the 992 just a couple weeks ago to this, it feels raw. It feels small, compact, it handles so damn well. Don't get me wrong, it's not a 3 RS by any means, but it's pretty damn raw, so I gave it an eight out of 10 for rawness. Next is the interior. Interior is a seven out of 10. It's an older Porsche, super comfortable. The nice thing is this car does have Apple CarPlay and some of the creature comforts, but it's getting older. Next is date night. Would I take my wife, my girlfriend, my new love interest out on a date in this? Absolutely. Date night's an eight out of 10. Next, we've got value for money. Perhaps where this car excels the most and something that was extremely eye-opening to me, this car is a hell of a value. You can get into one of these for around hundred grand. You can get into one of these with all of these mods done for 120 to 130. It's nuts. So value for money is a nine out of 10. Next is long-term investment. How will this do long-term? Well, they made a bunch of 997.1 turbos. I think it'll be average seven out of 10. And last but not least, excitement. This car is exciting. It is exciting and honestly, I wanna jump back in it and go for another drive. I might just do it when I'm done filming. Excitement is a nine out of 10 for a total 670 wheel horsepower, 2007 turbo gets an 82.5 out of 100. What a bargain, what a machine, wow.
I'm about this close to doing it. I haven't sold my demand yet, but damn, this is definitely in the running for my next daily. If you guys enjoyed that video, go down below, give me a like, subscribe, all that shit. Give me a comment. If you've driven one of these, let me know your feedback. I love you guys. Take care.